My name is Rahul Mukherjee. I'm an associate professor at the South Asian Studies program located within the National University of Singapore. I am an associate professor at the South Asian Studies program, which works like a department of South Asian Studies. We have three historians, one political scientist, and I happen to be the political scientist, and two anthropologists. So we are very interdisciplinary. And recently, since July of 2014, I've also been appointed as head of research and an honorary senior fellow at the Institute of South Asian Studies, both of which, the South Asian Studies program and the Institute of South Asian Studies, are located within the National University of Singapore. So the Institute is a research division, and the program is a teaching and research place within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. So I teach the political economy of South Asia, I research the political economy and globalization in South Asia, and I do some public policy work as well. I am on a lecture trip to the United Kingdom, the highlight of which is the public lecture at De Montfort. I have just presented a conference paper in the morning, and beyond this, I have a series of lectures to deliver. But this is the reason why I came to Britain, and I'm delighted. The keynote lecture is uh, after a project which is very dear to my heart because I have been researching on the issue of why India went global. Uh, India is one of those countries which has resisted globalization for a long time. Uh, especially after colonial rule, it went for economic self-reliance. And I have been pursuing for over two decades now uh, the question of why it went autarkic and why it transitioned to the global. So this lecture actually summarizes a lot of my research, in, especially in two books. One is uh, an Oxford University Press book called Globalization and Deregulation, Ideas, Interests, and Institutional Change in India. And the other is a shorter, easier to read book titled The Oxford India Short Introduction to the Political Economy of Reforms in India. So this lecture basically builds on this major research concern of mine, which is why India went global. And I'm going to talk about various aspects of globalization. The positive aspect is that it has clearly increased India's profile in the global arena. Uh, it has produced rates of economic growth, which have also generated resources for redistribution. The negative aspect is that we find that growth automatically does not produce redistribution. So some people think that there is a trade-off between growth and redistribution. And my view is that you need growth, both growth and redistribution, and I'm a bit of an optimist. And I think that both have to be pursued. Uh, and I think they can be pursued. Uh, so if one is thinking of globalization alone without the state redistributing for the benefit of many, I think that can have disastrous consequences. Globalization has also produced uh, different types of imperatives that arise from rent-seeking behavior. Uh, while these problems remain, I do think that they are not surmountable. And I think India, in a sort of muddled sort of way, is sometimes succeeding in surmounting some of these problems. So overall, I don't think India has a way uh, other than globalization, but we need to study the trajectory of globalization critically. It's not an autopilot that will take India to, towards development. If you are a democracy with very powerful social actors, there is no reason to feel that globalization will not succeed. Because there has been this view within the extant literature that you need to be like one of those hard East Asian states in order for globalization to succeed. Uh, India clearly shows that the process is far more gradual, sometimes frustrating, but transformations happen. And when they happen after a consensus has been reached, it's possible that the equilibrium is far more stable and sustainable. So that, I think, is the, is the message from India, that you know, it's not necessarily true that if a country is globalizing rapidly and growing rapidly. Uh, that's the only way to globalize. Because we find that even countries that have grown rapidly 
are now facing pressures which are of a democratic nature. And I think that's where India has a lot of lessons to offer, that you are globalizing with the people. It's very important to be able to adjust to the global world today because the world is so differentiated in many, many different parts that you never know which part of the world will actually extract the best out of you. I did a PhD in the United States of America at Columbia University, uh, had every intention and did go back to India and worked in India for eight years and now I'm in Singapore. So I think it's very, very important, no matter what you do, which country you study, uh, to be able to connect with the global world and adjust with it and of course think critically about it.